This is a, a little area that we decided to have some ground cover. This is not sod, it is not lawn. It's called karapia. And this was developed in Japan and it's becoming very popular in the United States as an alternative to lawn because it requires very little water and no mowing and it has little clovers and the bees absolutely love it. So this is a huge attractor to our, to our pollinators. It does require more water than your traditional California natives. So we water this uh, once a week. Most of the, uh, all the other stations, we water once every 10 days. And really, ultimately, it'll, they'll be watered a lot less than Even that. Even less There's than that. still, most of this planting was done primarily in January. 15 months ago. Yeah. So they're still a little bit youthful and they need a little more water. But the important thing to know is that you can walk native, on native plants, um, almost all of them need to be watered when it's cold in winter, like, like in the hills. See but in the summer, they don't, like, they don't want so much water. This is, uh, I'm holding a California red bud. I'm sorry, a Western red bud, excuse me. There's an Eastern red bud too. You see these cool little bites out of this, these leaves? That's by a particular kind of moth that loves the red bud and we just let it, let it uh, feast. It we don't, try to, we don't try to kill it or anything. What the, our landscaper told us is the caterpillars, the baby caterpillars, this goes in the cocoon so that when the cat caterpillar hit um, starts to make its way out, this is what it eats. It's like a little lunchbox for the caterpillar from the mom that takes the, this leaf. And the, and the western red bud will drop its leaves entirely and then have red buds over this entire plant. They're sort of a pink red. And then when those red buds drop off, then you get more leaves. So it's an odd kind of a plant where it's blooming without leaves and then leaves without blooming. Um, we're getting now into uh, more of the buckwheat area. You've heard, the, you've heard of buckwheat. Well, there's probably 50 or more varieties and we probably have five of them. Um, this is a classic California buckwheat and it's just starting to bloom. Just starting to get the blooms on it now, which is nice. Here's um, a little bit more of the penstemon, margarita bop. This is, I think, my favorite plant. This is a buckwheat, believe it or not, this huge plant. There's two of them. They started, again, 15 months ago as one gallons. I could show you, I'll show you pictures. Uh, these, is, this is called, what's it called? Ca um, St. Catherine's Lace. St. Catherine's Lace, and it's a white, these will all turn into beautiful white, tiny flowers in another a month or so, and they'll last for the summer with virtually, when, when I say drip, these are all on drip, they're getting uh, a gallon of water every 10 days in a drip and that drip takes an hour to drip one gallon of water. As these grow, uh, you have to move the drip line farther away from the plant so that you're not s just soaking the root ball. You're actually s spreading the water out. And so, it, it, and all you have to do is pop these up and then move them over and, and you can do that. By the way, these are also really pretty. Once that stops blooming, these become like a dark brown color and it's really strikingly beautiful. Um, this is another buckwheat. This is the coastal one, isn't it, Margie? Yeah, that's the Channel Island buckwheat. So this is, this <laughs> is a, a third one that we're looking at, and you see it's starting to bloom. And when these die, you can leave them and look at them in this rusty kind of color, or if you don't like that, uh, you can deadhead them, which means you're just taking off the, the, the dead parts. Um, this is another, this is I think our fifth manzanita that we're showing you. This is called a big berry. That will be a tree. This, this is our, uh, our, really our one tree. Now we're not going to let it grow higher than this, this fence because we don't want to block their view. But at least that'll fill in this area. So you're seeing lots of gaps, which some people like and some people don't. Some people like all this stuff to kind of grow into each other. It's sort of your preference.